Lee McGregor, how are you? Yep, all good, mate. All good, thanks. Now, this this fight, this Isaac Lowe fight, it's been building, been bubbling for some time. When it was first made, it just felt like, oh, that's a that's a nice fight. Stick them in together, see, see who comes out on top. It's turned into a this kind of bitter rivalry where he's he's calling you things, he's saying he's going to put you to sleep and retire you. I think you've said he's bottled it at some point as well. What's been going on? Yeah, no, like you said, it was when it was first announced, everyone said great fight, and I, I, I thought it was it was a perfect fight for me. After, um, yeah, like my fight with Eric Robles was July last year. We were going to finish the year with a good fight with Isaac, and then hopefully get back to where I f felt like I belonged. Uh, I unfortunately got injured. The fight fell through. We had had the rescheduled date. Uh, we had planned to go early this year and for whatever reason it just sort of didn't really happen. I think, well, Fury Usyk, first fight happened, he was on the on the undercard of that, to, got to beat someone up that, that nobody really knew or heard of and I feel like that was, he was enjoying it, he just wanted to do that. Um, and then, I'm going to be honest, I thought the fight was dead in the water and I just went away do my own thing, needed to get my momentum back, start enjoying it again, which I'd done. I've come back with two two wins, two knockouts, and I said that I'm fed up of being the, being the nice guy now and staying silent. Like, I want I want all the big fights, you know, and I said to my manager, Lee, like, I'm willing and ready to fight any of these guys, featherweight, super featherweights. I wasn't even, I'd kind of sort of forgotten about Isaac. I said, you know what is, what is. Um, he went missing, like I said. Let's 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 get big fights. I don't care who it is, and that was our plan. And then talk started again with Isaac, back and forward. I thought he was gonna just like I said, keep carrying on fighting off the back of Tyson and beating guys that nobody nobody heard of. Um, but now we've got the fight over the line. He stepped up. I've stepped up and let the best man win. Seems to be some hostility there, just from. Obviously, I did the press conference yesterday, and that was a quite an entertaining, although expletive-filled back and forth. Um, what was what was the relationship like with you two? Yeah, I think. Do you know what? I think it's more on his behalf, and I think it's more. I, deep down, he knows he knows he's in for a real tough night. He's in for a hard fight. I think he's trying to build build himself confidence. Uh, he's always, yeah, he's clowning around, trying to be the funny guy, but. Deep, deep down inside, he knows he's he's in a in a real fight. Um, so, listen, we got him Isaac before. I've, I've not got any bad blood there. Like I don't hate the guy. It's you know what it's like. We're in this game. We're gonna we're gonna fight in December, and we're gonna try and take each other's heads off. We're gonna fight for our lives. Literally, we're we're um, we're on the biggest stage in the world, and I win feel like changes both of our lives. So. That that's what's at stake. So there's no, you don't really need to any more motivation to to be up for it anymore. So I think he's just trying to maybe sell the fight. I don't know, but um, like I said, deep deep down he knows he's in for a tough night. You've been sparring Nick Ball, is that right? Yep, I've I was just off the back of that camp there. Uh, I was down there for maybe two three weeks. Great team, great guy, brilliant fighter. Lot lot of respect, lot of time. And even being down there has just obviously made me realise that that's the level I'm at. Like that's the level I belong at. Uh, I'm sure he'll vouch for me himself. You know, I've I've sparred him many times now. M more like uh, you're not gonna get called back, and you're not gonna get asked yeah. to work. They're to serious team, guys, I know. No use. So they know. Um, good people, like I said, Paul and that is coach a, a great team, um, and they've to be honest that before I got. Went down there the spar and I was wondering what's happening, what what am I gonna do? And that's when I said, Look, I know, I know, I know where I belong, I know how good I really am, I need my chance, I need that. And then like I got two fights behind the scenes, not as big a stage as what I was previously fighting on, but what I needed at that point in my career. And um here I am now, and I think beating Isaac in style shows Shows the level I'm at and shows you that where I believe I'm at, and I believe that's the world level alongside uh, Nick Ball and all the other top champion. Angelo Leo, he's an our world champion. Sparred him too. These are the these are the guys I want to be fighting and at the level I belong at. I believe. 
Well, Nick Ball has a, a win over Isaac Lowe. Were any, did you, have you spoken to him about you fighting Isaac? Did Nick give you any advice, any tips, anything? Or? No, just the, obviously the next real boxing guy. And I, I don't need tips from him. He knows, his, he knows his, he's told me, like, I'll deal with him, deal with him quite uh, convincingly. That's his opinion. I'm sure if you speak with him, he'll give you his, his opinion. But again, it doesn't really matter to me. I know what I need to do. I know me going about it the right way and doing what I should be doing and preparing the right way. I come out victorious and that's all that matters. It feels like mentally right now, it feels like you're in a great place. It feels like you're, you're sort of gearing up for a career best kind of performance. Is that, is that how it feels for you? 100% up there, mentally, physically. I'm normally like, we're eight weeks out, I'm normally, because I've made them low weights before and it's normally just the start of training camp and just a long grueling process of trying to get weight off. I'm already in great shape. It's because I've come off the back of two fights. Again, this is where experience comes into play. You know, I've I've stayed on it, um, looked after myself. The older I'm getting, the more wiser I'm becoming, um, the more experience I'm gaining. I'm in a great place, as people can see, and uh, that's when I'm at my best. And I need to. I need to beat my best. You know, I can't get away. I'm on the biggest stage of them all, and it's um, an opportunity to change my life and my family's life. It's just simply no way that I'm going to let it slip. You haven't had it easy in your career, though, have you? It's it's been a bit of a slog at same, times, right? Same with my life, Dev. Same with my life, and again, could sit here all day and tell tell everyone. And but like the people know, people close to me, everybody knows it's it's been tough. You know, I've, I've said this p previous interviews like. The stuff that I've been through in my life and the early on in my career and my career, it's I, as much as I've hated every moment of them bad times, the worst times ever, but I wouldn't change any of them because, and that's mad and it sounds mad me saying that, but it's made me who I am today, it's made me the man I am today. Like them deep dark times that I've gotten through and I'm still here, I can't get any worse. So that's what makes me so excited. Like. Even that last, that Robo's fight, like how I felt on the day of the fight, again, only the people close to me know, was horrendous. Like there was nothing I wanted to do more than just say, I can't, I can't fight. It's just not in me. And I still went in there and gave, in people's opinions, one of the fights of the year at my worst, my absolute worst. As people can tell, you can tell by my energy, my demeanor, everything, like, People know when I'm on it and people know when I'm struggling and I'm in a very, very good place. And that's when, again, like I keep saying, I'm at my best and Isaac will, um, will pay in December. I do, I think I'm gonna make a big statement in this fight. And again, people say, don't put pressure on yourself. Doesn't matter, I, I believe how good I am and I'm gonna show it and I know what level I belong at. It's time to, it's time to start. Yeah, like, why would I not? You know, like, cause I, like I'm well. So worth you. Feel like I've got respect. I get on with everybody in boxing. You know, like I don't think many people have bad things t to say about me in boxing. So, but then I was just kind of falling down that tree. Like I c that means I can't call that guy out because, like, I'll get people think I'm arrogant or whatever. No, but I just believe in my own ability. And if you weigh the same as me, and this is why I've said before this Isaac fight got finalised, I was honestly hand on heart, any featherweight or super featherweight, even I was saying even super featherweights because I was willing to do that as well. In the UK, I'll fight any of you, like, I did not in a disrespectful way. I just believe in myself. And again, it's been my attitude and mindset my whole career, fearless. Same with my amateur career, I explained this in a previous interview. I went from winning the Scottish Novice Championships, which is under six fights. I remember all these dates in that world, because it's just, again, one day we'll maybe write a book about it all, but it's, it's just, it's all true. It was 2013, under six fights, October, Novice Championships. That fight in the novices made me go to seven, which was then January 2014. I could then, I was eligible to fight in then immediate championships, seven to 14 fights won them. February was the Open Championships. People, coaches and people were saying, oh, maybe not, it's in our year. Went in them, won them. 
March in Scotland, my hometown Edinburgh, Meadowbank, the gym that I'm training at for this fight. Straight final, GB finals, Sonny Edwards. He was the golden boy of England boxing back then. Little kid from Edinburgh, Lee McGregor, just won the novice championships. Uh, 49 kilos, I wasn't much, um, wasn't much smaller than I am now, I was just a big beanpole. And uh, Sonny Edwards fought him, GB finals, beat him. April, World Youth Championships, 2014. Go back six months, I was five, six fights, a novice, in this, and I was just deep in, deep in, deep in. I was just sink or swim, and I was swimming. I obviously swam through it all. Same with my pro career, turn pro. IBF World Youth title in four fights. You were very fights. quick, didn't you? Commonwealth title yeah. five, unified Commonwealth British in eight. And I'm the f again, we corrected the fact with Sky because they were going and saying that it was Adam Azim who was the fastest to win British Commonwealth European titles. Um, which again, they admitted they were wrong. Um, fastest fighter in Britain to become British Commonwealth European champion in 10 fights myself. Same amount of fights as Adam Azim, but I'd obviously done it in one round. Gives Kenny McGuffey. So, yeah. That'd be my full career, fast track, fearless mindset. Stop, everything stays the same. A little bit of bad luck in between it. We overcome it, we go again. Chapter, whatever chapter we're on, um, that one begins in December and I think it's the best one yet. Best of luck to you, Lee McGregor. Good man. Thank, Thank you, you, mate.